Next, we'll move on to inserting a pump. We will insert a pump into our model using rotating equipment. We will also insert another pump into our model using rigid elements and allowable loads. Then we'll modify the pressure of the pump discharge lines. To define rotating equipment in the model, you can select the Tools Rotating Equipment option. The Equipment command enables the user to define rotating equipment and to evaluate the forces at the nozzle and reference points using API 610, API 617, and SM NEMA standards. In addition, Autopipe provides a user rotating equipment option to evaluate piping loads using vendor supplied allowables. The process is to first specify an equipment ID, then select the type, and decide whether or not a report should be generated. Autopipe then filters the dialog to include fields related to the type of equipment selected. Once the equipment type is specified, whether it's a turbine, compressor, pump, etc., point names can be assigned to locations where the piping system meets the device. The equipment can then be evaluated to determine whether these forces are within the range allowed by the rotating equipment code. You can refer to the rotating equipment calculations section of the help for more information. Reference points can also be used to model the suction and discharge points of rotating equipment. With this method, a simplified modeling approach is to use rigid elements to model the rotating equipment and this allows for the modeling of the equipment and its supports. This will help account for nozzle thermal movements automatically by specifying a temperature for the rigid piping representing the equipment. This feature is very useful to create a comparative load ratio report for any nozzle or connection to a vessel or rotating equipment respectively, which has manufacturer defined limits. The reference data point is a special single point component that allows the user to specify element N results at a point. For example, a run point has a negative and a positive side in which the element N forces and moments have been calculated. If there are concentrated loads acting at a point, the forces and moments will be different on each side. With this feature, the user can specify the side for which the actual and allowable loads will be reported. At any given point on the model, there are four sets of element and results. First, there are two sets of results, one on the negative side of the point and another on the positive side. Then on each side, there are two sets of results based on which half of the free body diagram is being considered. The magnitude of the results will be the same between the two free body diagrams, but the signs will be opposite. Hence, the reference data point definition should allow the user to select any one of four sets of member end results. There are some specific options available. The user can specify the element end results from either the positive or negative side of a point. Then the user can specify the direction towards which the loads are applied. The user can specify the element end results at a point in either the local or the global coordinate system. And the user has the ability to define allowable loads for the element end results. Next, we will modify the pressure of our pump discharge lines. The operating pressure and temperature dialog box enables the user to define specific temperature and pressure data for each operating load condition, beginning at the current point displayed in the dialog or over a range of selected points. This dialog is automatically displayed during the definition of a new system, but must be selected manually if a new segment is inserted into the model and operates under different loads than the original segment. Once displayed, the dialog fields have three colors to denote their status. Fields are grayed to identify that the values differ over the currently selected range, and they're black to denote that they're identical. When a field is modified, its color is changed to blue, and gray coloring applies to all fields except the auto user fields. Further, the allowable associated with the auto user field will be grayed even if the allowable over the selected range is identical, but the auto and user flags differ. 
The apply only blue changes field becomes accessible in this dialog and is by default enabled. When enabled, only those fields which are changed by the user and colored blue are applied to the currently selected range. For example, a range of points with varying temperatures can be assigned the same pressure. Similarly, changes can be limited to only one operating case. If you disable this field, it assigns all information displayed in the dialog to all points in the range. So note that this field can also be used in conjunction with changes to the user auto field to provide a number of different desired behaviors. Continuing with our piping model, we will begin to insert our first pump using rotating equipment. The first pump will be between points B25 and C00 with segment B as the suction line and segment C representing the discharge line. We will insert our ANSI 4x3 A40 pump using the dimensions shown in the graphic on page 5 of your workbook. So we'll zoom into the area between points B25 and C00. And we can insert our pump by coming to our insert ribbon and over to our rotating equipment button. We'll give this pump an equipment ID. We'll name it pump one for simplicity. And we'll select the type as pump. When we select that, we see the rest of the dialog box is now populated for inputs to define our pump. We do want to generate our report, so we will leave that checked on, which it is by default. We will use the 11th edition of the code, the latest available. And if you need to move the dialog box to make sure we see our suction and discharge points in the model, our pump suction point is B25. And that will be located on the end of the pump. And our pump discharge point is C00, which will be located on the top of the pump. This is going to be a horizontal pump, and the shaft axis is the global Z axis. And when we're defining a pump, we need to define the pump center point. So we need to reference that from a point that's currently in our model. We will reference that point from B25 and the offset to the center point from B25 is negative 0.85 feet in the DZ direction. Again, coming from page five in the workbook. When we're done with the dialog box, we can click OK to accept it. Notice that the pump will not appear in the graphic. We can specify the properties of this pump, but we won't see it appear in the model like the other auto pipe components. AutoPipe will simply use this pump information that we've defined to check the cold and the hot reactions at the suction and discharge nozzle connection points against the API 610 pump allowable values when you run the analysis. So we've defined our first pump. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.